Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Louise from The Dusty Jacket. Today we're taking young readers on a journey filled with magic and mystery, invisibility and immortality, and flying and finding. I'm going on an adventure. So hold your breath, make a wish, as we give you five fantasy books for kids. Let's get started. Our first book is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt with a recommended reading age of 10 and up. Ten-year-old Winnie Foster lives with her father, mother, and grandmother in Tree Gap. One day, Winnie meets a man in a yellow suit looking for a family and has a particular interest in their wood. Winnie has never ventured outside the fence, let alone into the wood. Maybe there's something out there that she'll find interesting. Written in 1975, Tuck Everlasting is the story of the Tuck family, who drink from a spring and inadvertently discover immortality. They've been unable to keep their secret safe until a chance encounter with Winnie threatens everything they've been hiding. This book is folkloric in nature with bits of fantasy, drama, and a touch of romance. It's a quick read packed with moral lessons and questions like, would you want to live forever? Yep. The only downside is that the ending felt rushed. Babbitt spent so much time giving readers a detailed image of the wood and the tucks that the end fell a little flat. This was one of those rare stories that an additional 20 pages might have helped give a more satisfying ending rather than a one to two page wrap up. Still, Tuck Everlasting is a journey worth taking. Our second book is The Golden Dream of Carlo Tuccio by Lloyd Alexander with a recommended reading age of nine and up. Carlo Tuccio's uncle thought he was nothing more than a thankless, dim-witted dreamer, a chooch. Maybe he's right. Carlo spends his days loitering at the docks and imagining places waiting to be visited and explored, places far beyond his home in Magenta. But adventure is closer than he thinks when he meets a bookseller and he's offered a book that hides a map. Soon Carlo embarks on a journey involving an unlikely set of traveling companions all headed to Cathay and the fabled Road of Golden Dreams. Lloyd Alexander takes readers on a magical journey filled with danger, mishaps, missteps, humor, and romance. Although there's no flying carpet or bottle genie, excuse me, there is plenty to delight and entertain readers of any age. At the heart of the story is young Carlo, a dreamer filled with integrity who would not let his desire to be held in high regard outweigh his need to do the right thing. I love the story, but my favorite character was Solomon, a kind and gentle man of few words, but those words are balm to the soul. When Carlo was unsure about what his future held, Solomon replied that the journey is the treasure. And Lloyd Alexander reminds us that treasure awaits all of us if we are just brave enough to open a book. Third is The Terrible Thing That Happened to Barnaby Brockett by John Boyne, with a recommended reading age of eight and up. The Brockett family was undeniably the most normal family in all of New South Wales, perhaps even in the whole of Australia. That was until their third child was born because, well, you see, Barnaby floats, and having a floating child is not normal. Not normal at all. Huh? What? Told in the vein of Lemony Snicket, John Boyne delights readers with a tale that mixes awfulness and meanness with kindness and goodness. This is a story about fitting in, finding your place, and accepting the person that you're supposed to be, rather than the person that you're expected to be. Throughout his adventures, Barnaby meets people from all over and across various walks of life. And along the way, he comes to discover that the terrible thing that has happened to him may not be so terrible after all. At number four is A Finder's Magic by Philippa Pierce, with a recommended reading age of eight and up. Till has lost his beloved dog, Bess, and ever since that awful day, he goes to bed in despair and wakes up desperate. One night, he's visited by a finder who promises Till that he'll help find his lost dog, but it won't be easy. This book has a rather interesting backstory. Pierce wrote this book for her two grandsons, and it was illustrated by the children's other grandmother, Helen Craig. The main character's name is an anagram of the two grandsons' names put together, Nat and Will, giving us Talon, or Till for short. Pierce gives young readers a wonderful tale of mystery, mischief, and magic. Sorcery. 
The story deals with issues of loss and trust and tackles both with charm and humor. After the book is finished, parents might want to remind their young reader that this is a fantasy book and that it is never appropriate to go running off with a stranger, especially one who offers to help you find your dog. Whew. Danger, danger, danger. Last on the list is The Mostly True Story of Jack by Kelly Barnhill with a recommended reading age of 10 and up. In the town of Hazelwood, Iowa, everything is neat and quiet and predictable except for the deep purple house with its bright green door that sits on the edge of town. It belongs to Clive and Mabel Fitzpatrick, and during the summer, we'll be home to their nephew, Jack. But something is happening in the town of Hazelwood. There's a buzzing sound that you can hear in the air and feel on the ground, and Jack will soon find himself at the center of everything. I can't help but feel partially responsible. Barnhill gives us a story full of magic, bravery, and friendship. The plot does get a little confusing as the reader is provided cryptic clues through old diary entries and postings by Jack's uncle that are needed to piece together the bizarre events occurring in the Fitzpatrick home and around town. Overall, I like that the main characters in this book were loyal, fearless, and chose decency over convenience. Parents, there are some creepy parts in this book. But all in all, the mostly true story of Jack is about feeling comfortable in your own skin, trying to fit in, and most of all, just being true to yourself, or mostly true. Well, that's it. We'll post a link to our Goodreads page in the comments section below should you wish to read the full review of any of these books. And if you enjoyed this video, please click on like and subscribe and make sure to hit the bell so that you're notified when new videos become available. Again, thanks for watching, and we look forward to bringing back some old titles so that you can make new memories, because any time is a good time to dust off a new favorite. Keep reading!